the dead shall arise from the tomb, and the living to help be restored, and away from all sorrow and gloom, they'll be led by the life-giving Lord. parts of this drama are hungry for part four. Now we are to trace the experiences of the church from Pentecost to the present time. We are anxious to look beyond the veil into the future to obtain a glimpse of the church in the heavenly glory as Christ drives. More than this, we would anticipate the blessings of Messiah's reign in the human uplift from sorrow sin, crying and dying, to perfection and joy in the Creator's image. But before stepping forward, let us cast the eye of understanding backwards and mark carefully the lessons of the three parts already presented. First, the mighty power of the Creator and His wisdom as manifested in the material universe. Man, the crowning feature made in his creator's moral likeness. Second, remembering the deflection of Lucifer to Satan, the beguilement of Eve, the disobedience of Adam, and the consequent reign of sin and death should impress the lesson of obedience to God. Third, God promised by and by to restrain sin and death and through the glorified Savior as the King of glory to deliver all the willing and obedient from their weaknesses should inspire us with hope and with love for God. Fourth, let us remember the words of Jesus. It was necessary that the Son of Man should suffer and enter into his glory. Let us remember that all who walk in his steps must suffer with him if they would also reign with him. 
Let us remember that Christ's body or church will be completed by the glorious change of the first resurrection before the establishment of Messiah's kingdom to bless the world.